What mythology do you want to see Kratos take on next? Tell me in the comments down below. Now, God of War Ragnarok is the last game in the Norse realm, so that has got me thinking. What mythology is next for the God of War series? After God of War Ragnarok, we have finally explored the Norse realm, which in my opinion was a fantastic mythology to explore. But where will the God of War series move to next? What mythology will we dive headfirst into? What gods and goddesses will we take on? My name is Shane and I'm gonna be taking this journey with you. Let's take a closer look at some mythologies that the God of War series have hinted towards and even more heavily hinted towards by Tyr in the post game, according to director Eric Williams, which will play a huge role and part of my theory in this video. And before we get started, I apologize ahead of time for all the bad pronunciations you are about to hear. So let's first take a look at the mural that we find in Tyr's vault. On the four corners of the lost mural are four signs, and each of them means a word that Kratos knows all too well, war. In the top right corner is a symbol that should look pretty recognizable if you are a God of War fan, which is the Omega symbol, and it is the last letter in the Greek alphabet. It is mainly used to symbolize the end of something or the absolute limit of something, but obviously in God of War, it also symbolizes war. So will we eventually make our way back to Greece? Or is it symbolic of the past? Well, I guess we'll have to continue playing the games to find out. But the Omega symbol isn't the symbol I want to focus on in this video. I want to focus on the other three. So let's take a look. So first, let's take a look at the symbol in the upper left corner. Probably our most theorized mythology that we're going to next. This symbol is the Eye of the Sun God Ra. Which I made a video about this symbol before, which I think I completely messed up. I thought this symbol was for sure the Eye of Horus, but learning more about both of these symbols, the Eye of Horus is the left eye and the Eye of Ra is the right. So a small mess up on my part, but you know, it happens. The Eye of Ra is one of the most famous Egyptian symbols and has many different meanings and uses in Egyptian culture. The Eye of Ra can be an extension of Ra's fierce power and can be considered a violent force to take apart their enemies. It, however, can also be used for protection, which is why many pharaohs used it against spiritual forces or even a flesh and blood enemy. The Eye of Ra also acts as a feminine counterpart to Ra and can even work independently to represent another goddess entirely. But what god, goddesses, and mythical creatures could we see in Egypt if this is our next stopping point in the God of War series? So a personal favorite creature of mine that could show up in Egyptian mythology is Amit. Amit is known as the devourer of the dead. Amit has the head of a crocodile, the front limbs of a lion, and the back limbs of a hippo. In Egyptian mythology, the god Anubis would weigh the hearts of the souls of humans. If their hearts were heavier than the feather of truth, their heart would be devoured by a mitt, and their soul would be cast into a place that is considered as a fiery limbo. I don't want to mess with this guy. Or do I? Another really cool creature that we could come up against in Egyptian mythology is Apep or Opopis, and just reading his description sounds even cooler than a mitt. Apep or Opopis is the snake demon of chaos and is so gigantic, just him moving causes giant earthquakes and even bigger thunderstorms. So basically, it is a bigger badass brother of Yormi, but that is completely debatable. Apopus is the mortal enemy to the sun god Ra, and they have their battles which Ra comes out on top. So let's switch over to gods and goddesses for a second. So there is an amazing goddess that is known for her fury and represented by the Eye of Ra. See? Told you I'd come back around to this. Her name is Sekhmet, and she is someone that you really don't want to mess with. Just to show this, there's a little story that I completely paraphrased. So the people of Egypt were not conducting themselves after the law that Ra had set for them. So to show how displeased he was, he set Sekhmet and all of her fury onto the people of Egypt. And there she went and slaughtered a metric ton of people. After a while, Ra tried to call off her attack. At this point, Sekhmet was completely blood drunk and could not be stopped and continued to slaughter people. So what did they do to stop her? They filled the Nile with a massive amount of beer and pomegranate juice to make it look like blood. When Setmet saw the blood, she continued to drink from the Nile until she literally passed out drunk. And when she came to, her rage had ended and she went back to her normal duties. 
Now, there is a goddess I really, really want to see in Egyptian mythology. Now, the next symbol I want to talk about is in the lower right part of the missing tier panel. Now, this symbol is called a Triskel or Triskelion. Either way works, and it represents the Celtic mythology, which I am slightly more familiar with, but not that much, so I would really love to explore this mythology further. Now, what kind of beasts and gods would we see if God of War takes a turn and goes to Celtic mythology? So, a really cool creature that we could see if God of War makes a turn into Celtic mythology is the Questing Beast. Now, it doesn't sound very scary, but it can really do some damage. The Questing Beast is a hybrid monster having the head of a snake, the body of a leopard, the ass end of a lion, and the hooves of a deer. Sounds like one hell of a creature, but the Questing Beast is a notable creature in folklore coming up in the legends of King Arthur. The beast is known to be extremely fast and born by very unconventional ways, which will not be discussed here, but you're very free to check it out for yourselves. Now, another really cool creature we can see in Celtic mythology are the Slaw, which doesn't sound very fun to deal with, but would be really cool to see in a God of War game. The Slaw are evil spirits, or quote-unquote sinners, that come back to take people's souls. So these creatures come from the West and try to enter people's homes to take the souls of dying within the home. That's why many people would keep the windows closed on the West so the Slaws wouldn't enter their home. Now this seems like an awesome creature to battle. But what are some gods and goddesses that we might see? So one god I would love to see in God of War if they go to Celtic mythology is the Morrigan. And she is one badass woman I would not want to mess with. And to say that she is a basic or simple goddess to wrap your head around, you have another thing coming. The Morrigan is a very complex goddess from legend in old Irish literature. Being known for her traits such as power, fertility, death, prosperity, prophecy, war, and many others. And is known by many different names such as the Queen of Nightmares, the Celtic Raven Goddess, and the Celtic Goddess of War. But more recently, she is called the Great Queen or Phantom Queen. But the most fascinating thing about Morrigan is that she is known as a triple goddess. As in, there are three goddesses that form into a trio to make the Morrigan, which is completely mind-blowing to me. But some texts suggest that one of the goddesses named Anand, once again, apologize for the awful pronunciation, can be known as the Morrigan herself, but that is neither here nor there. And in my opinion, she is a must when it comes to Celtic mythology. Another person, more of a legendary figure or demigod, is the hero demigod Cúchulainn, and he has pretty much one hell of a story. So Cúchulainn was born to the name Setante, it's gonna be right here on the screen, and the son of the god Lug, who is one of the major deities of the mythology. Some sources say Lug was reborn as Cúchulainn, but once again, this varies between the sources. He was born with seven fingers on each hand, seven toes on each foot, and seven pupils in each eye. Even though this sounds very weird to us, he was also known to be a very masculine beauty. Many of his well-known quests he accomplished as a child, such as the killing, quote-unquote, in self-defense, of the Kulans, I think that's how you pronounce it, guard dog, who was so ferocious it had to be held down by three chains, to which he took the guard dog's duty, which is looking over the cattle of the land. In doing so, he stopped an invading army from stealing the cattle single-handedly just to name a couple of things that he has done. Cúchulainn was also known as the Irish Hulk. He became so bloodthirsty and filled with rage that he could transform himself into a massive hulking man and wipe out just about anything in his path. So just knowing this, I want to see Cúchulainn and Kratos square off and see whose rage and fury would win. I know Kratos is trying to be better, but you never know with Sony Santa Monica and what could send him down this path of rage once again. The last symbol that appears on Tyr's missing panel, and the last one we will be talking about in this video, is the symbol that can be found on the lower left side. This symbol is called a Triple Tomo, or the Mitsu Tomo, and is very popular in Buddhist culture, especially in Japan, which this symbol is very closely related to the yin and yang symbol, because they both seem to be in motion either clockwise or counterclockwise. The Triple Tomo is said to represent the human soul, and also represent the world triad, which can be considered either heaven, earth, and humanity, or birth, life, and death. Which, I don't know about you, but both the Triple Tomo and the Triskel seem 
pretty similar to me. What do you guys like? So, to be completely honest, I know basically nothing about Buddhist or Japanese mythology. So I have to do a little digging into some creatures and gods that we may see if God of War heads in this direction. So a very cool enemy we could see in Japanese mythology is the Tengyu. The Tengyu is a monstrous bird creature that can take the shape of a human, but in some sources is considered a type of god. The Tengyu was said to be the corruptors of humans and monks and lead them away from their religion. But in more modern times they are seen as protectors of sacred places such as forests and mountains. They are known to be amazing swordsmen and live in the trees high in the mountains. The Tenyu could make an amazing enemy of God of War and kind of reminds me of Valkyries a little bit being slightly bird-like and being amazing warriors. Another cool creature we could see in Japanese mythology are the Enenra. The Enenra are considered mostly to be demon-like creatures that are made up of darkness and smoke. They mainly reside in campfires and can only be seen by the pure of heart. Not only this, but there are two kinds of Enras. Enenras. Yeah, those. <laughs> One which is by far the most common is an Enenra that was born in an Enra. But the second is pretty cool, and I can see in God of War. The second kind is made when a person dies and is turned into an Enenra. But don't ask me how this is done at all. There wasn't a lot of sources about it, so I have no idea, but this is what the sources tell me. But if we do go to Buddhist or Japanese mythology, how about some cool gods that we could take on? Well, this mythology has plenty. Well, for this video, I'm only going to lay out a couple for you. So, with this first god, is actually a part of a set of gods. And the set of gods is known as the Shiteno. The Shiteno is a group of four gods that protect the Japanese Buddhist temples and the entire nation. Each of them is given a direction, season, virtue, and element. In many translations, they are considered demons, but the Shiteno are also considered to be the four heavenly gods, who are going to be placed on the screen right here because I do not want to completely butcher their names, even though I'm probably going to try, which consists of Jikokuten, Zokoten, Komokuten, and Tamanten. Once again, I apologize. Jikokuten can be translated to the guardian of the nation, carries a sword or a staff, he guards the east with the element of water and is associated with strength. Zokoten guards the south and is usually seen with one hand on his hip wielding some kind of pole or staff-like weapon. His element is fire and is associated with prosperity and growth. Komokuten is a guardian of the west and can be seen carrying a scroll and a brush. His element is metal and is associated with suppressing evil. Last but absolutely not least is the most well-known Shitono, who is Tomoten. Tomoten is the guardian of the north, usually seen with a depiction of a temple in his hand. His element is earth and can be considered as the Japanese god of war, due to his close association with the samurai. Just seeing these figures pop up in mythology gets me really excited for Kratos to travel to the far east. But according to Eric Williams and all of the clues that we have seen in God of War Ragnarok, which mythology is next for the God of War series? And for that, let's take a look at this clip showing Eric Williams telling us about the real tier that we find in God of War Ragnarok and how he is found in many of the realms. I mean, if you pay attention to tier, I mean, he, you, mm -hmm. we, there's a reason why he does the six animations that he does at the end of the game. I'm sorry, say that again? <laughs> So tier, once you free real tier, yes, yeah, he is in all the realms. Yeah, yes, so we've been we we've were been trying to down. we were tracking him. Yeah. Like, is he in Jotunheim? Does he pop up in Jotunheim? Um, I think that I don't think he's in Jotunheim. Okay, he's, he's in Midgard, Alfheim. He goes to the Spark of the World. Yeah, uh, he's at Svartalheim. He's Svartalheim. Uh, uh, Vanaheim at the yep. at the Grotto Camp. Right. Yeah. So there's like six different places he is. But, okay. So he's in. But he's, in, but he's he does very specific animations. Yes. So we, may, may have seen that he's been traveling the world. So now that we've seen this clip, let's take a look at the poses that Tyr is doing in each of the realms. On the screen, you will see Niflheim, Midgard, Helheim, Alfheim, Vanaheim, and the Great Void or the Nunagap. Many of these poses I have seen before and hints pretty heavily to one mythology in particular. But the ones in Midgard and Alfheim are kind of mysterious because he seems to be just standing there to me. If you see something I don't, please tell me. 
But just going off these poses that Eric has told us about, I believe the next God of War game will take place in Japanese mythology because of these poses that remind me very, very much of Ghost of Tsushima. Now, this is just a theory and there are a ton of hints between God of War 2018 and God of War Ragnarok that could bring us to other mythologies entirely, such as the picture of an Ankh seen right here, which takes place in Egyptian mythology. Big shout out to my brother Jake for sharing this photo with me. The Berserker armor that reminds me heavily of Samurai armor. The picture of Tyr traveling to many different mythologies, even possibly Mayan or Incan. I'm not exactly sure about which this one is, but it could very well be our next stop. And there are many, many, many hints in these God of War games. But either way, I would be happy to see whatever mythology Sony Santa Monica decides to take us on. Thank you all for watching to the end of this video. If you like it, please hit the like button because it really does help out the channel quite a bit. And I would really appreciate it. And if you did like this video, please subscribe. There's more to come. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.